Hi, welcome to part one of two videos on areas. You're listening to Dr. Harry Wiggins. I did Olympiads at high school because I found them fun, cool, and you get to see some really interesting problems and you get to develop your problem solving skills. And currently I am now lecturing at the University of Cape Town. So this video is dedicated to areas. Now, the term area originated from Latin, meaning a plain piece of empty land. It also means a particular amount of space contained within a set of boundaries. So if you are a farmer, you want to know how much land do you have for your sheep, goats or cows to graze. And if you're a business owner and you have a piece of land, how much space do you have for mall, shops, factories or buildings? Or if you're an architect, how much space do you have allocated for your kitchen, living room, bedrooms, garden, etc. So the ability to calculate areas are important. So before we get to do some area problems, let's establish some formulae. But let's start off with a warm-up problem. How many dots do you count? Well, you can do this the slow way and you can randomly count the dots. So you can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 we see eight dots. But what you also notice is that the dots are arranged in a special pattern. The pattern is two rows and each row has got four dots or four columns and each column's got two dots. So the answer to this problem is two times four or four times two, which is eight. Now, as I mentioned, the dots are arranged in the shape of a rectangle. And a rectangle is one of the nicest polygons you see it everywhere when you are walking around in your house shops malls everywhere you see rectangles everywhere and you would typically want to know what is the area of a rectangle so a rectangle is a polygon where opposite sides have equal length and all of the angles are 90 degrees so in this diagram we have these two sides which I'm labeling the base and these two sides which I'm labeling the height. So the area of a rectangle as I'm sure they've taught you at school is a base times height. So if you think back to a scenario where you have a rectangle of where the base is 4 meters and the height is 2 meters then you can think of the 2 meters you can split into two equal parts of 1 meter each and the four meter part you can split into four equal parts of one meter each. So then what you have is essentially the dot problem where you have how many dots do you have? You have eight dots and each dot can be tiled by a one meter by one meter tile. And one meter by one meter they've invented the notation of a square meter. You've seen this quite often if you are buying tiles at a hardware shop. So in this case the area would be 4 meters times 2 meters which is 8 square meters. Alrighty, so relating the dot problem, the dot problem with the formula of the area of a rectangle you can see there's a relationship between the two. So here we go, the first formula for the lesson is the area of a rectangle which is base times height. Great. Now before we move on to another polygon I have to mention that there are a very special kind of rectangle and those are rectangles where the base and the height is the same. Typically in that case we talk about the side length. Let's call the side length S. Those are very special shapes and they are called squares. So a square is a polygon with four sides where all the angles are 90 degrees and all the side lengths are the same S. So using our previous formula, the area of a rectangle is base times height. So if the base and the height are both S, then it would be S times S, which we know in algebra is written as side squared. And now we have two formulae, the area of a rectangle, base times height, and the area of a square, which is S squared. So we have dealt with a rectangle and a square, 
the smallest polygon that you can play with is a polygon with three vertices and they are called triangles so we want to have the area of a triangle now there are many formulas out there but we are going to start with a basic formula of a triangle so here i've sketched three triangles triangles one two and three remember triangles you can move left right up and down you can rotate them you can scale them so there are many ways of creating triangles now in each of these triangles i picked one of the side lengths and i called it b for the base so here in triangle one there's my b for the base this is triangle two this is my b for the base and this is triangle three this is b for the base and for each of those triangles i take the unused vertex so here the unused vertex is X, here the unused vertex is Y, here the unused vertex is Z. And from the unknown vertex, I drop a perpendicular to the base. And you can see in triangle one, it was inside, and let's call the vertical height H. In triangle two, from vertex Y, if I drop a vertical line onto the base, the vertical height was inside. But something interesting happens in case three. In case three, when I drop a vertical height, it is on the outside. You can see it's on the outside. So the vertical height is on the outside. And in all three cases, the area of those triangles is a half base times height. So when you're dealing with triangles, you've got to be careful what base you're selecting and what is the associated height. Now, returning back to case three, why is it on the outside? And the reason why it's on the outside is because of this angle over here. That angle over here, we call it obtuse. It's a little bit funny because that angle is more than 90 degrees. So that is the reason why the associated height was outside the triangle. Great. Now you can ask yourself, now where does this formula come from? Certainly we want to know why the area of a triangle is a half base times height. Now the proof, you've got to look at three cases. You've got to look at the acute case. That is when all the angles is less than 90 degrees. You also have to look at the right angle case. That is when one angle is equal to 90 degrees. And you also have to look at the obtuse case so the obtuse case is when one angle is more than 90 degrees so i'm going to do the acute case number two and three i'm going to leave it as homework hw so if you understand the acute case you can write up a little proof of why it's true in the acute case you can do this in the right angle case and in the obtuse case and i would challenge you to do it after watching this video or you can pause this video and do it right so in the acute case what we have is a nice little triangle we can call our triangle the following a b c and that's the side opposite the vertex b that's little b so a c is equal to little b and then what we do is we drop our vertical height h great and remember the associated height must be perpendicular to the base so that must be 90 degrees good now the trick to doing this is to put triangle abc within a rectangle so at vertex a you extend a line that's perpendicular to AC at vertex C. You extend a line that's vertical and perpendicular to the base AC. And if you extend it, you've got to extend it up until you reach points D and E so that you have the following. So add lines to form rectangle. A, C, D, B. And the trick now is to notice the following. Is that the triangle 
is broken up into two parts. You have the part one on the left and part two on the right. And focusing on, I'm going to label this important point over here, F. Great. So look at the following. BDCF is also a rectangle and BEAF is also a rectangle and BC is the diagonal of rectangle BDCF. So the diagonal of the rectangle splits the rectangle into two triangles with equal parts. So the area of triangle 2 and 3 is the same. Likewise BEAF is a rectangle and diagonal AB of rectangle BEAF splits it up into two equal parts. So the area of triangle 1 and 4 is the same. And so what do we have is the following. Is that if I add areas, area 1 plus area 2 plus area 3 plus area 4 will be the area of the rectangle which is going to be AC times BF. And now what is AC? AC is the base, which we decided to call B. BF is associated height, which is H. And now we know that 1 and 4, those triangles have the same area. 2 and 3 has got to have the same area. So therefore, this is going to be twice the area of triangle ABC and if we divide by 2 we see that the area of triangle ABC will be a half base times height. So knowing the area of a rectangle we get to establish in the acute case why the area of a triangle is a half base times height. So I want you to pause this video and see how the proof modifies slightly in the right angle case and in the obtuse case. But now we have our third formula, which is the area of a, tri of a triangle is a half base times its associated height. Great! Now playing more with triangles, we know that a very special triangle is a triangle where one angle is 90 degrees. Those are called right angle triangles. Now in right angle triangles, there's a relationship between the sides and that relationship is given by the theorem of Pythagoras. And here I've re-sketched a triangle ABC and I have an angle 90 degrees indicated typically by a little square over here. Okay, now the longer side is called C and so in this case C is the high and the hypotenuse is always longer than the other two sides. So C is more than A and C is more than B. And the theorem of Pythagoras goes as follows. That the hypotenuse squared in this triangle, C squared, is the sum of the square of the other two sides. So the one side is A, so A squared. The other side is B, so B squared becomes B squared and we're adding it up. So we see equation 1 that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. That is the theorem of Pythagoras. Remember, this only holds if you are in a right angle triangle. So, the hypotenuse squared is the sum of the squares of the other two sides. There are occasions where you want to make a or b or c the subject of the formula. So, here they are. For example, if you want to make a the subject of the formula, you can rewrite equation 1 and you can say a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Let's subtract b squared from both sides. So we see that a squared is equal to c squared minus b squared. And now to find a, we take roots on both sides. So we take a root on the left and we take a root, square root on the right. And the square root of a squared becomes a and we get a is equal to c squared minus b squared since a is bigger than zero. I'm going to leave it for you to verify that you agree with my formula that b is a root of c squared minus a squared and that c is a root of a squared plus b squared. All right. Now, this is the, this is the statement of the theorem of Pythagoras. But 
you should ask yourself, can we prove it? And how do we prove it? Actually, I think this is a proof that all high school students should know. And even if you're doing Olympiads, then you definitely must know how to prove the theorem of Pythagoras. And the proof of the theorem of Pythagoras is very clever. And it is something that uses areas, which is the topic of this video. So let's quickly prove the theorem of Pythagoras. And to prove the theorem of Pythagoras, there are many ways of doing it. But here is one way of doing it using areas. And it's very, very clever. It starts off by making four copies of the right angle triangle, as shown below. So we create this with we create this new shape with four triangles and a square of side length C as shown. So if you have pieces of paper, you can actually construct this yourself, or you can play around with it, and you we have the following shape occurring. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do area accounting. I'm going to do area counting and see what we get. Because the big shape, we can calculate in two ways. So the big shape, we can do in two ways. It is the big square, or it's going to be these four little triangles, four triangles, plus this little square. Do you see it? That if you cr create this shape, the shape is a square and it can be broken up into four triangles plus a little square. All right. Now the big square is a square. We need the side lengths. Each side length you can see is A plus B. So the big square as an area of side squared, which is a plus b squared. Now each of the triangles, remember, they are copies of one another, so they have the same area. So it's four times the area of each triangle, and you can see if you're using a base of a, the associated height is b. If you use a, a base b, the associated height would be a. So no matter which way you do it, each triangle will have an area of 4AB. And the little square is a square of side length C, so we get that the area of the little square is C squared. So what do we have? That we can calculate the area of the shape in two ways. It's either a big square or it's four triangles plus a little square. So we get the following using our area formula, that A plus B squared is equal to four times a half AB plus C squared. Now, a plus b squared means a, b, a plus b times a plus b. You can expand the brackets. Or you have memorized that a plus b squared becomes a squared plus twice a b plus b squared. Now, 4 times a half times a times b is 4 times 2, which is twice a b plus c squared. And now, looking at this equation, I can subtract 2 a b from both sides. If I do that, what remains is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, which is the theorem of Pythagoras. So a very cute proof using areas. As I've mentioned, there are other proofs out there. So Google, if you're keen to see other ways of establishing the theorem of Pythagoras. But we could see that playing around with areas, we were able to verify that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Great. Now, we have some formulae. So now we are ready to tackle some Olympiad problems. The problems in this video is coming from Prof. Pillay's book, 1000 Mathematics Olympiad Problems. And it can be ordered from the South African Mathematical Foundation. So I hope you have pen and paper with you and that you pause the videos, try it out yourself before watching my solution. There could be many ways of solving the problem and my solution might not be the most elegant or quickest way of solving the problem. Maybe you have a nicer and smarter way of solving the problem. 
If so, you're welcome to share it with your teacher. Great. So, without any further ado, let's look at problem one. It goes as follows. A shaded arrowhead is inscribed in a square of side length 4 as shown. Point A is the midpoint of a side of the square and point B is the center of the square. What is the area of the shaded arrowhead? Okay, so we have some side lengths so we can fill that in. So we know that's 4, we know that's 4, we know that's 4. We know that A is the midpoint, rereading. So we know that's got to be 2 and that's got to be 2. And we are interested in the area of the shadow head. Okay, well, the shadow head is a quadrilateral. It's not a square, it's not a rectangle, so we've got to be smarter. Just like the proof of the theorem of Pythagoras, we can do some area counting. So here is one solution. I'm going to call this solution one. So solution one will be the following. I am going to add up the white parts plus the yellow part, which is the area of the shaded head, that's going to be the square. Is Q U A R. Right. Now, do we know the area of the square? Yes, we do. It's four squared, side squared. Great. Now, the white parts, we can see the white parts can be broken up into three triangles. Can we work out the area of the three triangles? Well, we can see this area is a half base times height. So that's a half two times four. This area is going to be a half base times height, which is a half two times four. Great. So we know that this area we know, this area do we know? Do we know this area? Well, if I'm choosing this base to be 4, then I need the vertical height. Let's, for now, label it H. I need to know H. Well, do I know what H is? Well, let's reread the problem. B is not just any point inside the square. B is the center of the square. So, that means that the distance from there to there has got to be half of 4. That's going to be 2. So, the area of this triangle is going to be a half of 4 times 2. So you see that we are able to calculate the white parts because the white parts consist out of three triangles. Each triangle has the same area which is a half 4 times 2. So we are now in luck because now we can say the white parts are three triangles plus the yellow part, which is the area of the shaded arrowhead, must be 4 squared. And so each triangle is a half 2 times 4. And the yellow part must give me 4 squared, which is 16. All right, so now let's do the maths. So 3 times a half times 2 times 4. Do you agree that this works out to be 12 plus the yellow part is equal to 16, so therefore the yellow part is 16 minus 12, which is 4 units squared. They didn't give us units in this problem. So we got an answer of 4. However, there's an alternative way you could have solved this problem. And the alternative way of solving the problem is let's just redraw our arrowhead. Let's redraw our arrowhead and I'm going to label the points A, B, C, D. And then the trick is to join B to D and then continue that line until it touches line segment AC. And we know by symmetry this is going to be perpendicular. And we know that this is the midpoint because um, I should flip it around because B is the center of the square and this is point A. Let's call that point D. Oopsie daisy. So we know that that is 2. That's 2 because point B is the center of the square. 
and by symmetry we know that's 2 and that's 2. All right, what I'm getting here is the following, that the arrowhead can be seen as the, the difference of two triangles. Did you notice that? It is the triangle DAC, and let's call this point F minus triangle DBC. And triangle DAC, that's easy to compute. We use the same base in both triangles. So the same base DC, so that will be a base of 4. And the big triangle has a vertical height of 4. And if I look at triangle DBC, I have a base of 4, and so the vertical height would be 2. And so what are we left with calculating? A half times 4 times 4, which is a half of 16, which is 8, minus a half times 4 times 2, which is 4. Again, 8 minus 4 gives us 4 units squared, which is the same answer as before. So you can see sometimes there are many ways of solving a problem. And th this is the nice thing about Olympiad problems, that they can be solved in multiple ways. And here is a demonstration where we solve this problem in two ways. And in both occasions, we got the answer of four units squared. Good. Let's do another one. One side of a triangle has length 8 and a second side has length 5. What is the maximum possible area of the triangle? Goodness gracious me. We have two sides of a triangle but we don't have the third side of the triangle. And the maximum possible area alludes to the fact that there are many triangles with these properties. And out of all of the possibilities, we have to establish what is the biggest possible va value that the area of those triangles can be. Now, remember our earlier conversation. We get three kinds of triangles. So to solve this problem, you got to look at three cases. You got to look at the acute case. So let's say we have an acute case and with base 8. And let's call the one side 5. Then you've got to look at the obtuse case. You've got to look at the obtuse case. Again, let's make this base 8. And let's call this other side 5. And then you've got to look at the right angle case. Again, let's call the one base 8 and let's call the other arm 5. Alright, so there are three possible triangles we can have. We can have an acute triangle, an obtuse triangle or a right angle triangle. Now in each of these triangles let's construct the associated height with a base of 8. So this will be the height h because this one is obtuse we know that the height will be outside and that's h. So here we know if the base is 8 in the right angled case, the, the associated height will be 5. So here the area will be a half base times height. So this is a half 8 times height. So this works out to be 4H. Here we have that the area will be a half base times height. So if the base is 8, according to the diagram, it's H. So we get 4H. In the right angled case, we know that the area will be a half 8 times 5 and in this case it works out to be a half times 8 which is 4, 4 times 5 which is 20. All right, are we getting somewhere or is this not really helping? Well, let's go back and explore the acute case and the obtuse case. What do we notice? We notice that we have H sitting in this right angle triangle. So we have H sitting in this right angle triangle and because H is sitting in this right angle triangle we know the longer side is the hypotenuse and so in this case we know that H 
is less than 5. And therefore, the area is 4 times h, but if h is less than 5, then the area in this case will be less than 4 times 5, which is 20. Coming back to the obtuse case, we again see a right angle triangle indicated here by triangle x, y, z. We see that the hypotenuse is x, z, which is 5, and one side is x, y, which is h. So again, in this case, we see h is less than 5. So in the obtuse case, again, we know that h is less than 5. If the area is 4h, that the area is less than 4 times 5, which is 20. And now let's put everything together. We have shown that in the acute case, that the area of the triangle has to be less than 20. In the obtuse case, we know that the area has got to be less than 20. And in the right angled case, we know that the area is 20. So now we are able to answer the question. What is the maximum possible area of the answer? And the answer is 20 square units. And it is achievable in the right angle triangle case. And we are happy. We have showed that to maximize the area of a triangle given two sides is that the angle between the two sides has got to be 90 degrees. And we're done. Great. I hope this analysis makes sense to you. If not, re-listen to this again till you agree that the maximum possible area is 20. So you can see there are many possibilities, many triangles out there, but to get the maximum, you've got to make sure that the angle between the two given sides is 90 degrees. That was a little bit of fun with triangles. Good. Let's move on to our third problem. Let's read the problem. The side lengths of triangle DEC are all positive integers. You can see this is an Olympiad problem. Um, now we are dealing with a triangle whose side lengths are positive, meaning bigger than zero, and integers so they are whole numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. It has an area of 12. The longest side is 6 units. What is the perimeter of the triangle? So somehow we have enough information to calculate the perimeter, knowing the area. Okay, so I'm going to start off by a constructing our triangle. D, E, C, and say D, E is 6 units. So I'm using the base DE, so let's construct its associated vertical height. So let's call this F and, and let's call it H. So we know that the area is equal to 12. So we know that a half base height is equal to 12. And so what do we know? We're using the base DE. DE is 6, so a half times 6 times height is equal to 12. So a half times 6 is 3. So we have 3 H is equal to 12. So H is equal to 12 divided by 3. 12 divided by 3 evaluates to 4. Good. So now we know that the height is going to be 4. Now DE is 6. We know that. Good. Um, we don't know CE, so let CE equal to, if you have a triangle, typically you would use the opposite angle, which is capital D, so we can use it as little d, and let's call CD, it's opposite angle E, let's call it little e. Alright, so we want to see, can we calculate the other two side lengths of the triangle. Well, let's reread the problem. We know that the longest side is six units. So we know that CE has got to be less than six 
And we also know that CD is got to be less than 6. So in this case, it means that D is less than 6 and E is less than 6. Okay. Now, let's go back to the problem. We need to do some more. So we worked out from the area that the vertical height is 4. Now, what we also notice is by doing this way, we ended up with two right angle triangles. And we know that if we have a right angle triangle, that the hypotenuse should be the longest. And we just established that the, in both of these triangles, that we have a common side CF, which is four units. And it should be shorter than the hypotenuse in the two triangles. So thus, E should be more than four and D should be more than four. Now let's try to put everything together. We know that D is more than 4, D is less than 6, but D must be a positive integer. We know that E is more than 4 and E is less than 6, but E must be a positive integer because it's a side length. So thus, we see that D is equal to E is equal to the only integer that's bigger than 4 and less than 6. Did you guess it? Yep, it is 5. So therefore, we can do the perimeter. The perimeter would be DE plus EC plus DE plus EC plus CD. And DE was 6, CE was 5, CD was 5. And so 6 plus 5 plus 5 is 16 units and that is the answer to this Olympiad problem an, an interesting problem a nice one and we managed to get the answer of 60 good